you are finally ready to take the plunge to play that dragon game everyone's talking about, or go back to another round of a full-blown proper honest-to-god D&D campaign. You gather the four friends that you feel remotely comfortable playing pretend in front of at your grown age, spend an inordinate amount of money on sparkly dice, bonus points if you do so while playing online so you will just not use them, it's just a muddy sinkhole, and you are ready to play! Or are you? I'm Antonio D'Amico, this is Pointy Hat, and today we'll be looking into everything you need to know before starting your next campaign, on this brand new episode of Tip of the Hat. D&D campaigns are the white whale of many players. There's only so many disconnected one-shots and unfinished adventures someone can take before you start craving the real thing. I'm talking character arcs, I'm talking development, I'm talking ongoing storylines, I'm talking backstory exploration, I'm talking most likely never actually finished- wait, 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 I'm supposed to sell you on this. Never mind. But I don't really need to sell you on this, do I? Everyone wants to play a campaign. There's a very big difference between having light, consequence-free fun in a one-shot and getting actually invested in your and the other players' characters. But a campaign is a commitment, a massive one, from both the players and the DM. And I think that it's very easy to just get excited about a cool idea you got after watching a show or playing a game or something, scream at your buddies that you are starting a new campaign and they need to come right now, and then let it fizzle out or just flat out never start because you didn't do the work that it takes before you even start to make sure your campaign actually goes well. But fear not, this is what this video will teach you. So let's get right into it. This is everything you need to know before you start a D&D campaign. First off, this guide is more of a DM's perspective on starting a new campaign. But wait, stop. I very, very much think players can and should use this too. Your DM is not your waiter, they are not here to entertain you. Knowing the ins and outs of what a campaign requires to start will set you up for success as a player too, and will certainly make you kinder to your DM. Get them a food basket or something, because they are going through it. And better yet, you can become their favorite player, if you know exactly how to help them. And also get them that food basket, come on. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on the narrative side of things. What narrative work you must do on the story, world building, narrative side of things before unleashing your gremlin players onto your game. I have plenty, plenty of thoughts as to what to do on the gameplay side of things, and that's gonna have to be its own video because I started writing this as just one video, and it crept up to like 10 plus pages of script before I was even finished. So scream in the middle of your living room or the comments if you want more tips. Let's talk how to start your campaign narratively, and let's do it through a numbered list, because I know you love it. Number one, tone. Before you scream at me about the high concept anime tier world you are setting your campaign on, you need to be 100% on something that I think a ton of people just never define clearly. And that mysterious and very important thing is tone. The tone of a campaign is the general vibe of it. To use less vague words, it's the mood of your campaign. It's sort of similar to genre, but not really. We'll talk about that later. Is the tone you're going for comedic, horrific, emotional, epic? This is the feel of your story. But how do you find out what the tone of your campaign is? Simple. Ask yourself how you want your campaign to feel like. Think about your favorite shows, or movies, or games, or books, and ask yourself which one of those you want your campaign not to play like, not to resemble plot-wise, but to feel like. The Lord of the Rings is sort of the poster boy for epic tones. If you're going for this, you want that high fantasy feel of grand adventures with world-ending stakes and plenty of NPCs with names full of apostrophes. It's serious, it's big, it's earnest, it feels like the most important thing happening in this world is the story you're telling. That's what going for an epic tone in a story is. There is no wrong answer to this, it just needs to be something you are excited to run. I, for example, don't generally like DMing, or really playing, in campaigns with epic tones. The tone I personally go for most of the time I call adventurous. Think of stuff like Avatar The Last Airbender, or the Tales Off series, or Mistborn I guess, early Mistborn though. I like running games where the general tone is light, fun, concentrating on adventure, with plenty of room for joking around, but with also plenty of room for very emotional scenes and even darker scenes. I never veer into grimdark or horrific, but my favorite stories are those where a light and fun tone is punctuated by a more serious, more emotional tone, and rarely, but still present, darker moments. I think the juxtaposition works perfectly with D&D, where at the end of the day people are sitting around a table to have fun, but also to explore their characters and get invested in them emotionally and in the story we are telling. Defining the tone of your campaign will make it feel cohesive, and more importantly will allow you to explain to your players that this is indeed what you're going 
going for. Have you tried to run a grimdark horror game about a world on fire where everyone's miserable and it's really sad and dark and edgy a la, I don't know, Bloodborne? Only for your <laughs> players to crack jokes constantly and never take it seriously? Part of that issue is that you never communicated an expectation of tone. Or maybe you did and your players are assholes, <laughs> in which case... <laughs> find new players. But if your issue was not communicating, now you can, because you know what tone is. And now that you have the tone of your story, we can move on to number two, concept. A ton of people start here, and I get it. For those of us that like world building, a normal amount, this is the most fun part. But we can start with dessert. Now that you have established the tone you're going for, you need to find a concept. This is of course assuming you're not running an adventure off of a book. If you are, this work is already done for you. Congrats. If you aren't, or if you are, but one day you would like to make your own, listen up. Are you going high concept or low concept? High concept are ideas that are easily communicated in a pitch. This story takes place in the near future version of America where teens are forced to fight to the death in a televised spectacle for the elite. This story takes place in a theme park that features actual living dinosaurs and what happens when they escape. This story is all about a tornado with sharks in it. These are all high concept stories. The concept is easy to pitch because the concept is the main thing that makes the story interesting. And as a result, the concept takes up a lot of room in the story itself. Low concept stories, on the other hand, leave more room for characters, as the concept doesn't take as much room in the story, or any room at all. This story takes place in a hospital. This story is about a family going to a beauty pageant. This story is about... Friends! Because the concept is not the most interesting part of the story, the characters or how the story is told is what shines in low concept stories. The simple concept leaves room for a lot of character exploration. If this sounds complicated, it isn't. Let me give you an example. A high concept D&D campaign would be... In this world, spellcasting is heavily regulated because those that can use it are at a higher risk for being possessed by extraplanar beings, which has led to the systematic oppression of spellcasters. Whereas a low concept campaign would be, the players work for a guild that takes on jobs that are posted on the guild's bulletin board. For the weebs in the audience, most anime tends to be like extremely high concept by western standards, like almost anything considered low concept in anime would be high concept in the west. Okay, so this show takes place in, in the future, sort of cyberpunk future, in, in a world where there's a system, sort, uh, sort of an all-knowing system, that categorizes everyone by their mental health level, but and it also assigns people a job based on their brain. Like, what would suit them best based on how their brain works. And it's mostly an utopia, like it works really well, except people that can't adapt to the system or otherwise become mentally unstable are seen as liabilities and are oft and the story follows a police officer that believes in the system but also sees firsthand what it does to those that don't fit in it see very easy to pitch barely an inconvenience there's no wrong choice here once again you do what you want some stories that were originally high concept when they came out became way less high concept as time passed and they became ubiquitous Lord of the Rings, once again, springs to mind. Although I wouldn't call it low concept even today, it has just become generic fantasy by virtue of everyone copying it. But choosing what level of concept works for your story is important. For what it's worth, I tend to go high concept, but not anime level high concept. Okay, once you have your concept, high or low, it's time for... Number three, setting. Once again, assuming you're not just running your campaign off of an existing book, we need to define a setting. A setting, of course, derives from your concept. If you're running a campaign where the air outside of cities is poisonous to anyone not carrying, I don't know, a crystal or something, your setting will be very much impacted by that high concept premise. I'm just gonna repeat general D&D advice here and tell you to stop building a whole world from the start. This is a fantastic way to never ever play your game. Build what you need for the beginning and continue to build as you run your game. If you world build until everything in your world is fleshed out, you are never playing your game, ever. But here's where I go against general D&D advice because it runs into my least favorite D&D advice. Don't over prepare. I hate it. I hate it so much. It means nothing. So let me be clear. You must do some major world building before just making a town and letting your players run loose in it. If I take the example we just said a second ago, that of a world where everything outside of cities is toxic and people must travel with some magical thing to even be able to breathe outside of cities, we gotta establish a bit of how this world runs in general before starting on a specific town. 
Maybe in this world small towns are just not a thing since it would be too expensive to maintain the force field around them for the amount of people that live in it. Maybe there's a specific job for those that carry the magical protection thing to travel outside of cities. Maybe that's what the players are. Maybe these magical protections are issued by a government body and there's some corruption going on in the capital city from which they operate. Maybe there's a secret group that seeks to take down these magical protections for a reason nobody can quite understand. See, those are all bigger than the town you start at, but they are necessary to make a cohesive world. Especially if you go high concept, and who am I kidding? I know you're gonna go high concept. The tightrope walk here is prepare enough so that the world makes sense, but not too much to stop you from just never ever playing because you just world build endlessly. Find the balance. If only a country is relevant to your story, build only that country, ever. And as a matter of fact, build only what is relevant inside that country. You do not need to flesh out what the man-eating forest of carnivorous plants in the south of the country smells like if your players won't get there until they are like four months into your campaign or not at all. Build until you're comfortable, but don't build until you're cuddled. You gotta run this at some point. This is D&D, not writing a novel. Once you have enough of your setting decided, it's time for the most important one. Yes, really. It's time for... Number four, conflict. I, like any other toxic person, like to start campaigns with a conflict. This is unorthodox, since a lot of campaigns start in a tavern, and I'm going to be measured and kind in my response and say that I f***ing hate this. I personally cannot stand waffling about the world with no direction for sessions upon sessions not knowing what's up. I just straight up don't like the pure sandbox approach to campaigns, but you are welcome to use it. But it really, really doesn't make sense to me when a DM is not going for sandbox, as in there is a main plot to this campaign, but they just don't put you on it. So the first five to 10 sessions are you finding the plot, the party sticking together out of obligation because you need to stay together to play the actual game, which I find extremely immersion breaking and just generally not fun to go through. Once again, starting in a campaign and waffling about is fine if the game is about waffling about sandbox, but if you're doing linear or non-linear storytelling, if there's a plot to this, you can do what you want, but I heavily suggest starting your players with a clear understanding of the conflict of your game. Is this campaign going to be an anime tournament arc? Great, start them as they sign up for it. Is this campaign going to be about defeating the evil wizard apostrophe hyphen name? Cool, start them as they all enter the dungeon where the first MacGuffin of mystical power that they can use to bring the wizard down is located. Better yet, give them the main plot of the campaign during character creation and ask them to make a character that would want to participate in the plot of this campaign. If your campaign is about liberating, I don't know, a country from evil fey influence, tell your players about this conflict and let them come up with the reason why they would want to do this. Conflict is what makes stories. So regardless of if you prefer to start in a tavern waffling about until you find the plot or you are like me and prefer to get to the plot ASAP, you need conflict anyway. If you're running sandbox, I don't know, I can't help you with that, I have never run sandbox and I don't want to, but I've run plenty of linear and non-linear stories, and they all need a conflict. Having a conflict will allow you to structure the story of your campaign, prepare the big plot points that players are going to hit, and the different choices that could arise at those plot points. Without conflict, there is no story. Once again, this is kind of non-negotiable, you need conflict. Examples of conflicts are, evil empire is about to dominate the entirety of the galaxy and you must stop them, a big shark has chosen our quaint resort town as a picnic spot, or your dad is sent to mandatory military service, just like BTS, but he's too old to make it so you have to go in his place. Once you have your conflict and everything we prepared before, it's time for the big one and the one that most people don't do. Finally, five, include your players. Hear me out, this might be the most important lesson in this video. You, the DM, are not telling a story. Telling is something that only one person is actively doing. Telling a story requires an audience to passively listen, and your players are not your audience. There is no everyone runs games different here. There's no nuance, just straight up don't do this. The thing that makes D&D different from reading a book or having a book read out loud to you is the collaborative storytelling aspect of it. The DM is not telling a story. The entire table is, and your role as a DM is to provide a framework conducive to storytelling, which is easier said than done. Once you have your tone, your concept, your setting, and your conflict, find players. And maybe wait for my video on tips because there's way more to say on that than any other subject. Ask them to make characters for you, and then it's on you to tie those characters into the world and the story you've created. How I do this is through the complex magical ritual called communication. 
I ask my players what they are hoping to accomplish in this campaign by playing this character. Do they want to see a character grow and change? Do they want a character arc? Do they have a specific way they would like to see this take place? Are they interested in meeting a specific NPC from their backstory? Are they more interested in uncovering the answers to some mysteries they've set up during character creation? Or any other goal? And once I have the answers to these questions, and once I've read the 1 to 78 pages of backstory my players have given me, it's time for work. You're gonna take their backstory and their hopes for this game and sprinkle them into your game. Your player wants their character to go through a character arc? Well, by looking at their backstory, you can find ways to challenge said character throughout the story to facilitate that for them. Your player wants to find out what happened to their missing dad? I can't imagine running a game that does not include finding this out somehow. Now that you have your tone, your concept, your conflict, and your setting, you can make sure to set aside moments in play where these things come up for your players. This is how you make your players the main characters of the story you're telling, and also how you allow them to join you in telling this story. This is why I'm so against DMPCs, or particularly important NPCs. What could you possibly need them for when you have three to six players that you could prop up instead that need so much attention in this narrative in order to feel like heroes? Give them massive character moments, tough choices to make, great triumphs, or great defeats. This final step is the time to involve your players' expectations, hopes, and dreams into the campaign to create a story altogether. But what about how you select your players? Can anyone be any DM's player in any campaign? How do you handle third-party content? How do you deal with scheduling and making sure that people actually show up to your table? How do you avoid burnout? Well, well that's a whole bunch of questions. And they'll be answered in a future video. As I said, this was already way too long and I wanted to give the narrative part all the focus it deserved, so we will visit this topic some other time. If you don't want to miss it, it's time to... You know what it is. You know what it's time to... Subscribe, like, comment, all that. Prove to the algorithmical god that it rules all over us that you enjoyed this and want to see more. But what if you're a player getting ready for a campaign and you need help with your character and not to make a campaign? Well, here's a whole video about making your own D&D character. Or how about a whole entire video on how to world build, if you need more of an in-depth look on that and the setting part. And now, best of luck with that campaign. You're gonna need it, but I know you can do it. Mwah!